قطعة الخردة هذه اشتراها الصحفي الأمريكي روب ووكر بثلاثة دولارات فقط وباعها بعد فترة وجيزة ب 86 دولارا كيف استطاع روب أن يمنحها هذه القيمة التي تتجاوز سعرها الحقيقي بعشرات المرات؟ ببساطة أضاف إليها حكاية الحكاية تطفي المعنى وخلق المعنى هوس بشري لا يقدر بثمن فما هو هذا السحر الذي تستملك من خلاله القصة عقولنا؟ The man woke up in the morning. It was all silent. It shouldn't be. Why was it so quiet? His heart started thumping. He thought to himself, no, it can't be, can it? He put on his slippers. He ran to the door. It was open. It shouldn't have been. He came into the hallway. There were tracks on the floor. He thought to himself, no! He ran down the hallway, came to the balcony. He looked into the pool where he screamed. He froze. He cried because in the pool, his worst nightmare came alive. What he saw was this. The end. You see, now you want to hear the end. I placed questions in your head that became unanswered, i.e. building anticipation. And number two, I used my voice to build that anticipation. There you go. That's the core of storytelling. We all have a prefrontal cortex residing just here. Its purpose is many, but one of the purposes is to replay the past replay the past stories of our life so that we can learn from them. عندما نذكر الحكاية نفكر بالأدب، الفن أو ربما اللغة. قد لا يخطر ببالنا أن الآلية التي تنسج بها القصة شركها هي بالأساس عملية علمية كيميائية بحتة. أبطالها ثلاث ناقلات عصبية مشاغبة تتحكم في رغبتنا، خوفنا، وإحساسنا بالألم. الدوبامين هو كور لـ moving a person from A to B. Every single action you do in life is driven by either dopamine or cortisol. So imagine that you're thirsty and you're starting to think about water. What the body does then is that it injects small doses of dopamine, teasing you to the beautiful relief of drinking water. And then you go and drink the water and boom, you get a big injection of dopamine as a reward. And looking at the story, cortisol is a hormone which is released when we either we need to increase our focus or that we're running away from something that may be painful, very simplified. So every time in a story that I intensified my voice or I increased the expectation of what I was saying in the story, it creates a little surge of cortisol. Another way to create oxytocin is to give them characteristics which are unique. So movies are usually about people who are brilliant at things. Very smart, very good dancers, very good singers. Because we care more about people who have specific characteristics which are uh, promoted in our society. So when we look at a movie, we enjoy watching people who can live a life which is too far away from us. We would never take that step doing that dangerous thing or committing that particular thing but by watching the TV series we can become that for a short period of time we can live our life through their eyes and you know what's scary with oxytocin is that you can ultimately believe and root for any person on earth irrespective of how bad they are as long as they have a characteristic which you're hooked to لكن ماذا عن الكوميديا؟ ما سرها تحديدا؟ We're not entirely certain actually why comedy works. Uh, we know definitely that there are different kinds of comedy and a core element in comedy is cognitive dissonance, which means that you're expecting an answer and then an entirely different answer comes by. So jokes usually end with a twist. And the reason for that twist is that we were expecting something entirely different and then something else comes along and then suddenly there's a glitch in the brain between what we expected and what happened and that evokes a humorous response. Why? We don't know. يبدو الأمر مريبا بعض الشيء 
بعض الأسئلة التي يزرعها أحدهم في رأسك مصحوبة ببعض التلاعب بطبقة الصوت وصفات تستدعي التعاطف لشخصيات بطولية ممزوجة ببعض النكات يمكنها أن تغير نمط تفكيرك وتؤثر على موقفك حيال قضية ما أو شخص ما وهنا يجب أن نسأل هل الأمر حقاً بهذه الخطورة؟ So imagine a cocktail with dopamine and oxytocin would create anticipation and caring. Whilst a cocktail, an angel's cocktail with dopamine and testosterone would elicit anticipation and action. So depending on what you want the other person to feel, you mix the cocktail that you want them to feel. Now listen to this beautiful cocktail. When you elicit endorphins into another person, when you elicit endorphins into another person, they become more inclined in sharing their own personal stories. And you know what happens when we share personal stuff? Oxytocin is produced automatically. This is the reason for when you meet a person, you intuitively want them to laugh. So you say something that makes them smile or laugh. Because intuitively, you then know that they will share more personal information which will create oxytocin and will allow you to bond with the other person. Now that chemical equation is just mind-blowingly beautiful. A lot of people do it intuitively, but learning how to do this with stories, wow, that's where the power comes in. And um, that's again, just using the prefrontal cortex that we have. The stories we believe in are the stories we fight for. It's the stories we get up in the morning and we do our work because of. But you know which is the most powerful story of all stories? It's the stories you tell yourself. The stories you tell yourself, are you a hero in your own stories? Or are you the victim in your own stories? When you go into a meeting, what stories do you tell yourself before going into the meeting? And if you fail in the meeting, what stories do you tell yourself after you leave the meeting? Stories you tell yourself define you as a person and as a leader and as a parent. And it will influence everything that you are, from your mental health to your how well you do at work.